All right, welcome to this week's video. Sorry about the disaster of last week's video. <laughs> the disaster theme, however, is occurring, and we'll get back to that later in this video. So we're doing this one a bit backwards. Um, we had a big storm, which was Storm Ashley. Uh, yes, it was Ashley, um, and um, she hit. And she's been and gone, thank God. <laughs> so God. before Ashley came, one of the little tasks we had to do was straighten the dinghy up because it was a bit loose in its slings, so it had deflated, and just get the boat cleaned up, diesel in the tank, water in the tank. We did not want to have to deal with those on a storm day, did we? No, the boat was absolutely filthy. And the worst thing about it is, it's filthy again, but never mind, we'll get back to that later. So, from now, in the future, we're going to go back about a week, and this is what we did coming up to the storm. Let's do it together. Have a quick look. Yeah, some diesel in the tank is definitely required. I thought it would be. <laughs> but let's get that dinghy plugged up first. Yep. Oh. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? I think it's really typical. <laughs> it's an absolutely cracking day. And we've got other things to do. I have got to build a wardrobe today. Oh, what fun and games. Not here, over at my mum's. Absolutely, but it's been a commitment for the last week that I've got to build this wardrobe and it's today. <laughs> and tomorrow it's meant to be a bit worse than today. It's supposed to be absolutely horrible tomorrow, but this is just typical. The only days that are nice and gorgeous, I'm going to be somewhere else. It's not fair. I'm sure there's a thousand sailors out there with the same problems. Come on, let's get this dinghy blowing up first. Can I actually do yeah, something? you just go. Just, just we're just going to go ahead and do everything. Yeah. We're going to take. Yeah, please. Yeah. <sighs> right, I'll, uh, I'll squish down in. That's pretty loose, obviously. Not, not important. Right. Yeah. Under here, you know. Hello. I, mean, um, I haven't got her on this way. Oh, let's do that first. Right, I'm on here now. Okay, put her on the bottom valve. Pump. Wait. That's not right. That's not right. The air is not coming. You, you put it on the wrong thing. times have I done this? I don't know, you were sucking the air out of it. Oh god. That's the suction one. Go. Oh, no. Now we're cooking. Go. That'll do. That'll do. That's all we need. Okay. Yeah. Now then. I think we need to lift her up a bit. Okay, well I'm in the right position. Oh. Hang on. Where is she relative to where she sits in the wrong of my uh, these are gonna come out, won't it? We, we can we can handle her from up here. Right, so we've got her secured that way. Right, okay. Can I put the seat back in? Yes, I think we can. Right about the boat. Need a scrub oh, the boat needs a heck of a scrub. Um, we also need to get these other um, cables on. Oh, because you've taken them off. Might have been an idea to do that before we secure it, but we'll give it a go. Okay. Well, Gainer's filling the front tank. My job is to fill the diesel. One of the other jobs we'll um, probably do today is just turn the instruments on just to drive out any moisture that might be getting into them. But uh, it's just all these sorts of jobs, but it's a nice day for doing it, and tomorrow is reputed to be not a nice day, so let's <laughs> just get on with it. The dinghy is now secure. Uh, she's pumped up, she's nice and rigid, so she should, should stay in her little cat scrabble of roads and not go anywhere. At least, that's what we're hoping.
it's a definitely a blowy day in Bangor. This is, um, I forget what it is, starts with an A, Storm Archie, Storm Eileen, something like that, Storm Angela, don't know, starts with an A, can't remember exactly which one it is, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely a blowy day in Bangor. It's meant to be hitting Force 10 today and it's been quite good up to this point, but all of a sudden it's just coming through. And we're kind of hoping that this will be a short, furious thing that will come through quite quickly. But uh, we just have to wait and see. Hopefully you can hear me over the racket in here. Because we're getting another one of these gusts at the minute. And I'm having a hard job holding the camera steady. Good God, I've just seen the boat next to us go over. Whoa! People next to us said that their boat was a wee bit tender in the wind. <laughs> That's about the same size, salty ass, roughly the same beam, roughly the same length, but god they were right about it being tender. It really leaned over there. I would have thought it was a racing boat, it would have a big deep kill. Oh! Here's the next one! I think we'll go back aboard. You might be more likely to hear me there. So that was that. Now the day after the storm I decided to film a little follow-up to say how we got on through the storm and this is when life started to go a bit pear-shaped. So <laughs> I was on my own, again it was uh, busy at um, our little winter job and the first thing that I found out later was that I had sound failure. None of my sound was recording right and it looked a bit like this. So that didn't really please me very much so I went and got a different camera and I was filming and it ran out of memory on the chip and that looked a bit like this. And then I got a letter which made me realise that I had yet another failure to deal with, but that failure was entirely my own. And it leads to an important question, which is when you're a liveaboard, where do you live legally? Mm. Now, the problem I had was this. It's very, very simple. It can be summed up in a sentence or two. We're here all the time. My legal address is somewhere else. It's over in England, in Liverpool. And of course, all my important mail Things like taxes, uh, renewals, uh, passport things, you know, things like that, um, council tax, all these sort of, they all go to the flat in Liverpool. They don't come here. I mean, the authorities will not send them here because they don't recognise things like a post box or anything like that. And all my documents, everything I've got filled in, everything in every government database says I live in Liverpool. Mm. And so do you. For some of them. Yeah. So the upshot of that is that all of a sudden I had missed out some things which really needed my attention about six months ago. And they now really urgently needed my attention. Basically she was going to be bitten in the arse. I was. <laughs> so the day I found this out, I booked this ferry, the Stena, overnight. I was back in Liverpool the next morning at 6am. And I spent a few days there sorting my life out and after the first pass through all the junk and getting rid of all the junk mail and sorting out all the really obvious stuff, I still had this pile to get through. Now lucky for me, about half of that pile, or maybe two thirds. <laughs> yeah. A my, lot pile, of... my pile was only like this, hers was like that. <laughs> but it does raise the question, when you're a liveaboard, what is your legal address? What do you tell the government? What do you tell the authorities? Hmm. Beverly um, has, has a legal address. <coughs> <coughs> the flat uh, that we own, uh, where my daughter lives. Um, and then, you know, when things come through, uh, my daughter can send them on. But the problem is, 
she had sent the document on to Bev, um, but Bev just thought, oh, it's only a renewal, it's not that important. And then all of a sudden she realised, yes, she did need that particular renewal. Um, you know, so that's where Beverly has her legal address. Now, I have still got my legal address at uh, where my daughter lives. As far as the government is concerned, yeah, you, you live at the same flat. I live at the same flat. However, there are some documents which I have moved to the marina. Uh, for instance, um, where I work. Um, it has this as my address um, and that is for a very important reason is um, because I want to become Irish <laughs> and you need the paperwork for it and I need the paperwork yeah. for it and basically if I live in Ireland for five years I've become Irish and I have dread to think how long I've lived here now yeah COVID, <laughs> gave, you, COVID gave you two years where you weren't allowed to leave yes yeah, so I've had COVID I've uh, tried to go round Ireland. I've lived here in this whole year for Ireland. I'm basically classing that I'm nearly done on all the bloody paperwork for five years. Yeah, it actually, um, when I was renewing my documents, so uh, one of the one of the things that had expired, by the way, was my UK passport. And um, if you're not in the UK, you might not understand. If you're in the UK, you probably see what's coming. The UK passport is more or less a de facto ID card. If you're doing things officially, they all ask for a copy of your passport page. Your current passport page, expired ones don't work. And all of a sudden I had to update stuff with an expired passport and they weren't having it. So the first job, renew the passport. Now, that's pretty quick, took about a week. But I needed that like last week. So then I have to start digging out birth certificates, tax records, anything like that. Um, one of the things I had to dig out was my P60 and it's a, ta it's a tax record sent out by the Linden Revenue. My problem is that my P60, because I'm doing jobs here in Bangor, shows Bangor as my address. Mm. So I can't use my Bangor P60 to sort out my problems at home. Yeah, so Beverly's got... You so know, I had to use an here. old P60. <laughs> it's like... And I think I've got away with it because the passport's in the post. <laughs> But anyway, so that, that's a whole shenanigans and things like that. But another problem it leads to, which you've encountered more than me, is when you're doing paperwork on a boat, it's not uncommon that you need to get it printed. Uh, you have to print your own stuff. They send you a form saying, print this out and fill it in. I have spent a fortune on printing. Um, <coughs> the marina here are very nice and they will print uh, the odd sheet. And that's okay, they'll print the odd sheet, but I have had to do paperwork where we're talking reams of the stuff. Yeah, like yesterday you printed about 20 pages. You don't want to ask the marina to do that, it's not fair. No, exactly. So, you know, and uh, I've got some more documents that I've got to do this week. Go to a print, go to a print, and, go to a print shop up here and they charge like 30p a page or something. Yeah, um, but I've got another document to print this week um, and that's going to at least now i've got a printer yes because one of the little things i did was i brought back a laser printer from the flat which led to an interesting incident in the ferry terminal on the way back when the security people were saying you know have you got anything sharp or, or dangerous in your luggage and i said well got a samsung laser printer <laughs> and they just looked at me like my my head was cut <laughs> yeah but it's back aboard here it's stored in our cupboard, which will be appearing in a future episode. Here's a, here's a sneak preview. And um, so that, that will be coming up in a, a later episode. But yes, so getting your paperwork done um, when you live aboard, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a thing. And I don't think we we, we had really appreciated that No, when we started living aboard. No, it's the fact that, like uh, Beverly says, um, like this, while we're here in Bangor, we do feel like we have got a semi-permanent address. But as soon as we're cruising, there's not a hope of um, having paperwork uh, follow you. Luckily, there is a lot more stuff online and I do so much paperwork online. I find also a lot of marinas are very good if you say, I'm coming to you next week and we've got a delivery. Can we have it dropped and we'll pick it up from you? Yes, uh, but that's for parts and stuff like that. We've had to do that, haven't we, Bev? Yeah, not set the tack. Oh, God, shut the phone.
Okay, so we were wrapping up. Where were we? Uh. <laughs> Go on. Look <laughs> Alden. Luckily, um, uh, a lot of things are done online and I try and do as much as I can online, like um, insurances, um, they're all done online now and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but um, what I've got to print this week is an insurance and purely because I, as well as online, I also like to have a physical copy purely because sometimes it's a, it's, a, it's a heck of a job digging them out of the email folders exactly and um, you know so sometimes I like to have a physical copy especially when it's for your mum mm -hmm. um, so, so there you go so that's something to think about if you're going to spend any time on a boat you do need to set up somewhere where all your important documents can go and even better if somebody lives there and they can open them and you say to them, listen, listen you can open anything, I don't really care, you know. Um, Do open it and tell us what it is because then we can make a decision as to whether we want it or yeah. it can be left. Yeah, we don't have any embarrassing subscriptions to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> For goodness sake, I got rid of those a long time ago, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Anyway, so that's a boat task you need to think about. You're going to spend time on board. Sadly for us, we're now back to the standard boat tasks that everybody thinks of, the mundane ones. So the water has to go in the uh, front tank because it's empty. The bird poop has to be cleaned off the boat again. Yeah. And the disaster zone that is the boat <laughs> below decks, where again, has been sorting out all the paperwork I brought back. Yeah. <laughs> that needs sorting out too, doesn't it? I, I, I did the first pass today and all I've got is this is the paperwork I've got to deal with. And Beverly's paperwork she had to deal with was like this. <laughs> That's because I did it all last week in Liverpool. I know you did it last week, but I've got, oh golly. So, so at least now I know what I've got to do. So we'll leave it there for now and we'll see you next week.